fly away up to the clouds. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Debbie Campbell Good Time Show. This artist that we have on today is an American entertainment legend. His career started in the 1950s as a teen idol. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show today, Bobby Rydell. Hi, Bobby. Welcome to the show. Thank you ever so much, Debbie. What a pleasure it is. So you're, are you, are you in Philadelphia right now? In the, in the sub- suburbs, an area called Blue Bell. Okay, and that's where you were born, right? Well, born, originally born and raised in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, yes. So you must be an Eagles fan. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Debbie. I've been a season ticket holder since 1963. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, wow. for the Eagles, yeah. Now, when you get season tickets that early, do, do are you grandfathered in for the price? Uh, am I, a, a, what do you mean by, uh, my like grandfather? You bought tickets, what, you bought tickets in 1963? Yes. Okay, so are you grandfathered into that price that you bought oh, them yeah. for? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Wouldn't no, that be no. nice, right? No, they went, they went up just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, so now your given name, you, you, was it Rydell? Is no, it Ridarelli? No. Ridarelli. Ridarelli, okay. Ridarelli. Robert, so did, Robert did Lewis that, Ridarelli. Okay, and when did that change? Actually, the, the story goes that years ago, I was on a show in Philadelphia for the Paul Whiteman TV Teen Club, okay. and it gave amateur talent a chance to get a break in the business. And what the press had said, you know, is that Mr. Whiteman, Paul Whiteman, couldn't pronounce Ritterelli, so he, <laughs> he came up with Rydell, but it actually was my dad. My dad came up with Rydell. Oh, that's because, awesome. Because all the nuns in school... I went to Catholic school. They called me Master Ridarelli, Master Ridelli. You know, they, <laughs> they didn't know how to pronounce Ridarelli either. <laughs> oh, how funny. Now, you were a part of that show for what, like three years? Uh, on the Paul Whiteman show? Uh-huh. I, I went on the show, and then I became part of the production team uh, doing, you know, doing numbers. And it was sponsored by Tootsie Roll at that time. And we were doing, you know, a lot of things with Tootsie Roll, so on and so forth. And then the show went off the air. And I was out of a job at 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started playing the drums professionally, what, at nine years old? No, five. Oh, my gosh, five. But five you were on stage at nine. Was that the first time you played on stage was at nine? Uh, uh, no, my dad used to take me around to clubs when I was like about seven, eight years old. Oh and, ask, and ask the club owner, is it all right if my son gets up and sings a couple of songs and does a few impersonations? So I would get up and do my thing. Right. And, he, and, you know, people would applaud. And I, and I thought to myself, wow, all I have to do is do that. And they do, you know, I do this and they do that. Right. You know, what a wonderful feeling. But getting back to the drums, uh, I've been playing since five. And that's all because my dad introduced me to big band music. He wanted uh-huh. me to, you know, to, uh, to learn uh, about big band music, four trumpets, four trombones, you know, five saxophones, et cetera, et cetera. So he took me to see the Benny Goodman band. Now I'm five years old. I didn't know who Benny Goodman was. Right. But my dad wanted to introduce me. So we go to an afternoon performance, and I was enthralled, you know, with the big band sound. I said, but there's one guy, Daddy. I don't know what his name is. He's playing drums, and I want to be him. And that was Gene Krupa. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was playing at the time for uh, the Benny Goodman Orchestra. And uh-huh. that's, how I, that's how I started playing. Wow. Now. You, at 15, you were a drummer for what, a Philly rock and roll combo group? Uh, a lot, I played with a lot of bands. We used to do weddings and social events and things like that. I was in a band called The Strollers with two brothers, Billy and Donnie Frio. One played guitar, one played uh, piano, uh, a couple of other bands. We never really did anything. We just gigged around, you know, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot yeah. of fun back well, then. Of course, yeah, at that yeah. age too, yeah. And yeah, so sure. then... Uh, by then, you were a po- Polish performer, and you were the youngest head to headline the famous Copacabana. Yeah, I was 19 years old, the youngest. Wow. En- yeah, the youngest entertainer to uh, perform at the Copa. Yeah. And, and what, what group were you with when you did that? Oh no, I was solo. I was oh, so solo. You, were you not playing the drums? You were just singing. Uh, no, I did not play the drums at the Copa. I had an act that was written by two gentlemen, uh, uh, Noel Sherman 
who did all of my special material and a man by the name of Lou Spencer who staged my act. And prior to getting into the COVID, Debbie, you know, we used to work clubs around Pittsburgh at the Holiday House, the Three Rivers Inn in Syracuse to get ready for the COPA. And Lou Spencer, he used to carry a roll of toilet paper, okay? And after I would do my show, he would take off a piece of the toilet paper and he said, this is everything that you did right. And then he'd roll out the sheet of toilet paper. Oh this is everything you did wrong. <laughs> How sweet, right? Yeah. <laughs> so take me to, so how many years was it before you got uh, signed with Cameo? Uh, that was how many years before? Uh, let me see. Uh, my manager at the time was a man by the name of Frankie Day. His real name, Francesco Cocchi. Oh, wow. And we went around to different recording, you know, companies in New York City, audition, you know, and nothing ever really happened. So as our last resort was uh, a local uh, recording company in Philadelphia called Cameo, mm -hmm. which later became Cameo Parkway. Right. The owner, the owner of the company was a man by the name of Bernie Lowe. And when I was 10 years old, Bernie Lowe was the piano player for the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. Oh, wow. At the team club. Uh, yeah. Who knew, like, so many years later, he's going to become my boss. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had a wonderful career with Cameo. I had a lot of hit records for them. And, uh, and, and, and the people who were there, Bernie Lowe was the president. And Cal Mann, uh, he wrote most of the lyrics. Bernie Lowe and Cal Mann wrote the lyrics. And a gentleman by the name of Dave Apple did all of the arrangements. And he was wonderful. It was just a great association to be, you know, with that company from right. about 1959 to 1964. Okay. Now, that you also had a record there that was like their best-selling one at Cameo was with Chubby Checker. Oh, we did an album. Yeah, we yeah. did an album together. It was released. It was released during the holidays, although it, was, it wasn't a holiday album. Right. But it was a big seller. It was uh, one of the biggest albums that was out at that particular time. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, years ago, uh, I, well, I have a book out, and we were doing a, a press, a press uh, conference in New York City at a place called Patsy's, Patsy's Restaurant, really a great restaurant. And Paul Schaefer, uh, who was with, you know, the Letterman. And right. The, yeah, the band leader. And he came up to me. He said, hey, Bobby, man. He said, I love the thing you did with Chubby Checker, man. That one thing called Your Hits, man, was great. And the, basically it was, it went, Your Hits, I wish I had your hits. We'd have a long, long line if we combine your hits and mine. Chubby would do my hits, and I would do his hits. Oh, how I, fun! Oh, oh, it was wonderful. It was a great album. Great right, album. Right, right. Yeah. And then, and then also, nineteen sixty-three. Oh my gosh, that was huge, right? A huge, uh, the movie. Oh, uh, bye, bye, Verity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I went out and I screen tested for George Sidney, who was the director, and uh, I screen tested with Anne, with Anne Margaret read a couple of lines from the script, you know, and we, uh, we both sang uh, and, you know, sang one boy, one special boy. And I sang one girl, one, yada, yada, yada. And Mr. Sidney said, thank you ever so much. We'll be in touch. And now I go home and my manager calls me Frankie Day. And he said, you landed the part of Hugo Peabody. So I had seen the Broadway show in New York and Hugo Peabody did nothing. He didn't sing, he didn't dance, he didn't have a line. I said, wow, you know, anyway, I, we go there and evidently Mr. Sidney saw something in me and something, some kind of magic between Anne Margaret and myself. And every day when I would go to the studio of being Columbia, my script got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, with more script, more dialogue more singing, more dancing. And, you know, I'm not a movie star, but if I was ever, you know, associated with one motion picture, it was a pleasure and an honor, you know, to be in, in Bye Bye Birdie. Because right. Bye Bye Birdie and Grease, you know, are two wonderful, wonderful Broadway shows. And, right. and basically, there are a lot of the shows that kids do in high school. They either do Bye Bye Birdie or they do Grease. So it's a classic, Debbie. 
Right. Oh, yeah. And that I was really interested when I was reading, doing research uh, that in Greece, the Rydell High is for you. <laughs> I, I don't know. I really don't know, Debbie. And everybody asked me the same question. I said, I mean, yeah, my God, it's a wonderful honor, but it could, it could have been Fabian High, Everly High, Presley High, Anka High. They picked Rydell for some reason. Well, because you weren't in the movie and Frankie was, so they had to give you credit. <laughs> that, yeah, right. Yeah, Frankie was Teen Angel. He was he played the part of Teen Angel in the movie, and, and he did what was the song Beauty School Dropout. Right, right. Which is I a great. Remember, yeah, I've it, seen it, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. great. It's a great piece of business. It really is a wonderful song. That yeah. was a, um. There was a lot of people in Bye Bye Birdie. Dick Van Dyke and uh, Maureen Stapleton and who else? Oh uh, yeah, uh, Janet Lee. Janet Lee, right? Janet right. Lee and Paul Lynn. One boy, one steady boy, one boy to be with forever and ever. One boy, that's the way it should be. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, I bet that just had to be. Uh, oh, I, I just go on YouTube all the time and I watch everything that he did on Hollywood Square. Exactly. exactly. He was hilarious. He yeah, was. was absolutely. Hilarious. Just off the cuff. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, about that time, I think was it after the movie, you, you left Cameo and then you went to Capitol Records. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. I, si I signed with Capitol. And unfortunately, nothing really ever happened with Capitol. I had one, uh, we re-recorded re Paul Anka's Diana. Okay. But we did it like a, uh, it was, uh, instead, you know, Paul was, oh, but, 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 I'm so young. And we did it, um, do, do, ding, da, bum, do, 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 like a neptide. I'm uh -huh. so young and you're so old. Right. And the record started moving. But then I, I think Wayne Newton was signed to the label as well. And I think it was when he came out with... Donka Shane. Donka Shane. Yeah. And they dropped all of the promotion that they had going with Diana. It was starting to make, you know, make a move. And then nothing happened. It kind of just fell by the wayside. Right. Uh, but I, I recorded some, uh, some really good tunes with, uh, with Capitol. I did a nice album there that had some really great tunes in it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but it, you know, it, it never turned out for me. You know. I read that you recorded one that Milton Berle wrote. Yeah, I was on the Milton Berle show and, uh, you know, Milton was a good, he was a good uh, uh, lyricist and, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, music writer. So the, uh, the opening song of, of the show was You Gotta Enjoy Joy. And the band, you know, basically went, you got to win, joy, joy. Uh, you got to love, love, ba, ba, da, da, da. you know, great, great big band arrangement. And I did it at Capitol. And uh, on the day, bro, all of the monsters, you know, uh, in L.A. And being a drummer, the drummer on the date was Louis Belson. And, you know, I said, wow, man, you know, one of my heroes, Louis Belson. And... <laughs> We're doing the date, and the, the chart started out. Anyway, okay, now we get into the head of the tune, and right. Louis and Louis was playing on on the ride cymbal. Ding 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 ding. I went over to him. I said, "Excuse me, Mr. Belson." I said, "But on the first, you know, course of the tune, can you play it on a closed hi hat?" He said, is that what you want, Bobby? I said, if you don't mind, Mr. Belson, you know, <laughs> I'm telling right. Louis Belson what to play. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So you, uh, how long were you with Capital, you think? Oh, uh, not long. Right. <laughs> uh, a couple of years, a couple of years right. tops, yeah. And then comes along Frank Sinatra. Right, yeah. And he asked you to sign on reprise now was that his own yeah, label yeah reprise yeah oh reprise uh, i'm sorry yeah and i and i and i said to mr sinatra oh, what time do you want me there and how much do i owe you mr sinatra well, yeah well he had quite a quite a, a list there on his label didn't he uh from what i remember yeah quite a few of course it was mr sinatra sammy davis jr uh dean martin uh, uh, dean was on yeah dean was on it and and the Jimi uh, hendrix uh 
experience. What, what? Oh, was he on? Was he yeah, on? Yeah, I saw that. That's what I. That's oh. what I read. And of course, oh. Nancy. Of course, Nancy. Nancy Wilson. Right, Nancy Sinatra. Oh, Nancy Sinatra. I think I. I okay, I, I, got, I was confused there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I read, and you know, well, so oh, you know. people do make mistakes, right? <laughs> when they write stuff, you know, sometimes they don't get information accurate. Oh, for so. sure, for sure. One thing I really enjoyed was that you were in the military. I was in the military. I went in uh, uh, in 1964. I took my basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey, and I was uh, not regular army, but I was a National Guard. Uh -huh. So after uh, my basic training, I did, I did, uh, let me see, that was 64. So I did six years in the National Guard. And we were uh, uh, the 103rd Infantry Combat Engineer Battalion, mm -hmm. which meant that we built bridges, we blew bridges, we built things like light floating tactical rafts, building bridges, culverts, so on and so forth. And I remember when McNamara was Secretary of Defense, he started activating a lot of National Guard troops for Nam. Right. And I said to the guys in the unit, I said, hey, guys, I said, we're gone. I said, what, what year was need? that? Uh, this year? was this. Let me see. This was 64, 65. Okay. You know, uh, no, no, excuse me. I, I took my basic 64. So it was maybe. maybe yeah, it's 65. Okay. And, you know, because I said to the guy, hey, look, what do they need over there? What do we do? We build, we blow bridges, so on and so forth. Right. Thank God, you know, we were inactivated. But one of the proudest moments in my entire career was in 1966. I went over to Nam and I was there for a month to entertain the troops. Oh, I bet that and was it, amazing. Oh my God, yeah. Debbie, my God. To be military, you know, first of all. Right. And then to go over there and make them happy for whatever, you know, an hour. Right. So it was just a wonderful feeling. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's what I told Tony when I interviewed Tony Orlando. I said, oh, that's yeah. my bucket list to be able to entertain, you know, the vets, because my stepdad's a vet. He was in Vietnam oh. in '68. Yeah, he he oh, was okay. in the Air Force. So I, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and and I remember I was doing a show in Play Coup uh, for the First Cavalry Division, and sitting in the front row was a kid in my squad at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Oh my gosh! Oh, how was funny. Al Al Novola. Right. And I, I looked down, I went, yo, wow. He looked up at me, yo, Bob. He said, why don't you stay? I said, no, no, no. I'm going to sing. I'm, going to I'm just here to sing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what an ex what an experience. It, How it, many it, years did you stay in? In the service? Yeah. Well, I went in 1964, and I had to do six more, I, uh, 1970. Okay, wow. 60, yeah, 64 yeah. to 70. Yeah. Now, in the 70s, you re-released your hit, wild one because what that was kind of like the 70s were coming into the disco, the disco yeah right yeah. right yeah and it, it, it turned out pretty good N nothing really ever happened with it debbie but i did there was also another version of a song that i recorded called sway and okay. you know basically it was a cha-cha you know marimba you know type of thing but we did it as a disco when marimba rhythm starts It's, I'm proud of the record. It, it charted a little bit, never really did all that much, but it was a great recording. It was really, really a good disco recording. I'll have to look for it. Is it on YouTube, you think? I'm sure you can find yeah. it. But you just go Bobby Rydell disco version of Sway. Okay. I'm sure you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So now you've been honored with your own boulevard the bobby rydell boulevard in philly yeah 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 that, that that's quite a few years ago and matter of fact i was born and raised on the 2400 block of south 11th street and a half a block away the 2500 block is where fabian lived oh wow yeah we were half a block away from one another 
Frankie Avalon lived around the corner from us on 9th Street. So Frankie was on 9th Street, Fabian and I were on 11th Street. And it was it was really an honor, the mayor, all of the dignitaries, a lot of the crowds, you know, from South Philadelphia, they all came. And it, it, it's nice. It's, it's it, from the 2400 block up to the 2500 block is Bobby Rydell. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of uh, Philly overnight, so I'll have to come and look for it. That'd be uh, cool. Hopefully it's still up. I don't know, you know, what's going on now. You know. Oh, I know. Goofy. They're it's tearing so, down all the historic stuff. Everything's yeah. going goofy, you know. know. It's even going goofy. I know. Well, and then also the town of Wildwood, New Jersey, they yeah. named a street for your hit Wildwood Days. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the national anthem down there. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I, you know, I've been a Wildwood guy all my life. My grandmother, God rest her soul, she had a boarding house in Wildwood, 232 East Montgomery Avenue. And my mom used to take me down there when I was an infant. And right. we go there, and, and Debbie would go there every summer. Every summer, even like after, you know, through grammar school and high school, that was the place to go, Wildwood, New Jersey. And I was oh. lucky enough that my grandmother had a boarding house there. You know? Right. So, Is that yeah. like northern or su what? what so, part, southern, southern New Jersey. Okay. It's about 45 minutes north of Atlantic City. Okay. Yeah. Right. Great, great place. Oh, how neat. And then um, in 2010, you re-released your Bobby Rydell Salutes the Great Ones. What year was it originally released? Oh, well, that was with Cameo. So I was with Cameo up until... 63 63 64 okay. so it was somewhere with the, within that time I, I, I honestly Debbie I don't know right you know so the shows that you do now um, when you're touring are they your hits or are they a lot of the great American uh, song books? yeah well when I when I work solo you know right. if I'm doing something solo and I like to work like I said earlier, my father introduced me to big bands. Right. So when I work solo, I'm working with like three trumpets, three trombones, five saxophones, piano, bass, drums, guitar, percussion. And I do quite a bit of songs, you know, uh, from the American American songbook. Right. And basically a lot of the tunes are Mr. Sinatra's as well. But I also, right. I also, of course, you know, look, people want to, and they want to hear the hits as well. Right. You know, so... Yeah, so I, of course I do all of the hits, but I still love to incorporate, you know, songs from the American Songbook. Now, it's when really, I'm, yes, it's really amazing the artists that I've been interviewing. How many of them you all have in common with the Great American Songbook? They all want to do those songs, you know. I love it. That was great material. Uh, have time. you ever worked with Don Most? No, I never have. Because no. he does that. He goes out with the big bands just like yeah. you. Do you play the drums sometimes when you're doing that? I haven't played. No, I haven't played in a long time. I still have my set set up in my music room downstairs, you know. Uh, and I go down and play every so often. I put earphones on. And I put on, you know, some big band stuff. Right. It be, yeah, you know, it could be Terry Gibbs or there was a great band in Canada called uh, Rob McConnell and Boss Brass. Mm -hmm. And just what you know to, to play to play the charts of of that particular band is a lot of fun. Uh, they're tough charts, and uh, and and they swing like crazy. They swing yeah, really really hard. So that's a lot of fun. Well, you look like a pillar of health, but in 2012, you <laughs> you had some issues going on there, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. In 2012, I had a double transplant, new liver and a new kidney. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that all happened because of drinking, you know. And well, uh, probably from the loss of your wife, I read. Ab absolutely, yeah. Debbie. Yeah. You know, that's you know, that's what started it all. Uh, we were married for thirty-five years. Her name was Camille Carmela Quattrone. She was lived she around Italian? <laughs> Camille Camille Carmela Quattrone? Are you kidding? <laughs> she lived around the corner from me on Tenth Street and I was on Eleventh Street. And we kept company for 10 years. I met her when I was 15. And we used to sit on the stoop, you know. And just sit and visit. And, and visit and talk and play, you know, records on the old Ford, the RCA 45 record machine, sit outside and go across the street to the soda shop called George's 
And, you know, then things started happening for me and I was on the road. I didn't see her all that much and so on and so forth. But every time, you know, I was on the road, as they say, you know, absence makes the heart grow fine. You know, I was really in love with this girl. So then I think it was, uh, I was 25, she was 24 when we got married. And unfortunately, in 2003, she passed away with breast cancer. Okay. And that's what started the drinking. That's what started it all. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Wow. I know that. I mean, that's hard. I'm a breast cancer survivor. It's only been, it's only been one year, but you know. Hey, God bless. I'll take it. Yeah. God bless you, Debbie. God bless. So, but you uh, received a humanitarian award for your advocacy to, uh, for organ donation. So you're a big. Oh, oh, well, what, you know what, Debbie, what I try to do when I'm on stage, whether it be with Frankie and Fabian, we do a show called The Golden Boys. I was just going to say, oh, The Golden Boys. (laughs) Yeah, it's a tremendous show. It's a lot of fun. But whether it be with the guys or by myself. You know, I tell the people that back in 2012, I had a double transplant. They all go, oh, right. and I say, and and I tell them the story. I don't make, you know, I don't try and drag it out. Right. I just want to make the people aware of how important it is to become an organ donor. Right. What I say is that as a favor to me, the next time you apply for your driver's license, please become an organ donor because it truly is the gift of life. And it is, Debbie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're living, breathing proof right there. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you tour quite a bit. I mean, you have done how many, what does your schedule look like in a normal world? Not 2020, but in a normal world. (laughs) Oh, I would say uh, taking this, I would say I'm on the road about eight, nine months out of the year. And, you know, around, you know, in, in the uh, in the winter months, you know, like uh, December, January, December is holiday, Christmas, there's a lot of people don't go out to see shows, right. they find gifts, this, that, the other thing. Right. So, like, I'm off for a period of about maybe, you know, three to four months. But now I've had since March 13th, I was in, I was in, uh, in uh, Florida to do a concert there. Mm-hmm. And that's been it. I've had somewhere in the vicinity of 19 engagements canceled Wow! because of the COVID. Right, right. Well, you, you have done like 20 tours down under. Don't you just love it over there? Have you ever been there? I have. I did quite a few tours with Dad. Oh, yeah. uh, how great is Australia? I know. I love huh? New Zealand, too. New oh, Zealand. New Zealand is wonderful. It's much more laid back. It's well, and then plus they don't have all the critters that'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what critters? Well, oh my gosh, Australia has every snake that. Oh well, they come have the on! Most, they do. I, you know what? I had to go to their little, uh, not zoo. It's not a zoo, but to uh, go see the spiders. And, oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, just to see what I'm looking for if I saw one. You know. Oh, well, you know, it's also nice they have those cute little koala bears. I know. I know. Beautiful. And the Kang- kangaroos. And the kangaroos. They're yeah. nice. You know, a lot of people think that they're. They walk around the streets of Sydney or Melbourne, you know, no, 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 no. no. they don't do that, but they're wonderful people. Yes. I love their food. I love their food there. They have a dish there called Oysters Kilpatrick that you can die for. It's oh, okay. Like a, it's like a clams casino and they bake it in this thing called a, a rotisserie or something. And the flavor is just phenomenal. Right. Now, it's where all did you play over there? Oh, my God. You name it. I've been all over the place. You know, we were at uh, Sydney, Melbourne. Uh, uh, Perth? At, 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 oh, I love that. That big casino. Is that where that big casino is the, there? Uh, Bay, yeah, it starts yes. with the B. Is it Bainbridge or something I like that? I don't remember the name of the casino, yeah. but I got a bar mat. Uh, my drummer and I we went in for lunch. And of course, we were in Australia, so we had a beer, you know, have some beers, mate. Right, you know, yeah. That'll, that, that'll be right, you know, have a beer. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and it had a little uh, bar mat, and I, it was called Swan. And I have that on my bar here at home. But oh, yeah, how neat. The, yeah, Perth. My first appearance in Australia was 1960, and sitting on the beach in Perth was me. And Don and Phil Everly. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so cool. I love yeah. that story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so gonna, cool. Yeah, very, very first time there, 1960. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever play in a wool shed? In a what? The wool shed where they sheared the sheep. <laughs> no, Dad and I did. We actually played in a wool shed. In a wool you shed? Yes. Oh, wow. my God. Oh, it was no. hysterical. And let me tell you what. His a wool shirt, shed. It was like a wet t-shirt contest that night for Dad. Because oh. his, <laughs> he was so, he was soaked. But oh, he wow. he had the best time. Oh, I'm oh, sure. I'm yeah, sure. I would have the best time. Oh, wool shed. oh, my God. That is so precious. Is that funny? Yeah. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. You know. So, you were such a teen idol, Bobby. I mean, oh my gosh, 25 million records that you sold. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, were yeah. you in any other movies? No, uh, well, I did one other movie and we shot it in Australia, okay. And it was called That Lady from Peking, uh, with Carl Betts and Nancy Kwan. It was a tongue in cheek spy movie. Right. And my brother was Carl Betts, who was writing stuff about Russian spies and this, that, the other thing. And I was a singer, you know, and I became involved with all well, with my brother, with this Russian spy stuff and the right. shoot him up, bang, bang. But uh, the picture never really did anything. I, I think you probably can see it. Uh, Monday night against Monday night football, I think, is when they play that movie. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I think, matter of fact, it's on YouTube. I think you could watch the whole movie. I bet it YouTube. would do good right now, next to football, with everything that's going on. <laughs> oh, I miss football. I know. I, I miss, I know. yeah. Well, I mean, we're into baseball season now, basketball. I, I don't need golf stuff. Do you like golf? Well, yes, I do. I love to play. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, we don't even know if there's going to be an NFL season. I you know, know football we don't know you will know. they refund your ticket money i i i don't know yeah. i really don't know what's right. what's going to happen yeah yeah so what other things would you like well you did write an autobiography what year did you write that that was about three years ago okay. it's called okay. it's called bobby rydell teen idol on the rocks mm -hmm. a tale of second chances and it's a great book, Debbie. I'm very, very proud of it. It's very honest. It's very sincere. And I just spilled my guts out. I was with a, uh, a friend of mine. His name is Alan Slutsky, a fine musician, guitarist. We sat for about a year and a half, two years to put this thing together. And Alan was also involved in a, in a, in a, a thing called uh, uh, Standing in the Shadows of Motown with the Funk Brothers. And he wrote a book on that, and he also did a documentary uh, about the Funk Brothers. So uh, he was the perfect guy to get together, you know. Right. With, and, and, and I'm very, like I said, I'm very proud of the book. Yeah, good I'm book. Gonna get, I'm gonna have to get that. I collect, I collect autobiographies. I love them. I oh, love okay. Them. I, I think yeah. I think you'd enjoy it, Debbie. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think you'd enjoy the book. Yeah. So, any bucket list items, Bobby? You, I'm sure you've got more dreams out there. Just to continue, you know, just to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm so bugged and dragged, you know, that I'm not, I haven't been on stage since March. Right. You know, and I can't, I'm chomping at the bit. I can't, I really can't wait to get back. Yeah. But, uh, no, just my bucket list is just to be happy, have a wonderful time with my wife. Yeah. Now, how long, have, how long have y'all been married? Uh, we're married 10 years now. Okay. Yeah. Where'd you I, meet her at? I met her in uh, 2007 at an Italian restaurant in Philadelphia on, uh, on Halloween uh, because there was one lady there who said, because they all knew about my wife, my first wife, Kimmy, all right. passed away, and they're all trying to set me up. And they're saying, I met a wonderful girl. I think you'd like her. I said, really? What's her name? And they said, Linda Hoffman. I said, that's my fan club president. My fan club president had the same name, Linda Hoffman. They said, no, 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 no. It's a different Linda Hoffman. Oh, how funny. <laughs> yeah. So she's a great girl. She really is wonderful. Uh, what a great caregiver. When I went through the liver and the kidney. And, and then a year later, I had a double bypass. You know, she, oh, my goodness. She, well, well, she was a nurse for 36 years. Uh -huh. 
I married the right person. Yes, you did. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You didn't even have to go to the hospital. You could have stayed at home. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But you know, I I don't know if I, I don't know if you have it in, in your papers there. Your dad, God rest his soul. You know, when I was with Reprise, he was he was studio musician. Oh, and he played Strangers in the Night. No, no, no. I had a record called "It's the Loving Things You Do," and it starts off with a guitar thing, and it's your dad playing on there. And we do the date, and we uh, what uh, how many takes we took. It was a pretty good record. Never did anything, but your dad said after we were done the session, he looked at me and he said, "Bobby," he said, "I think you're back on the charts again." I said, "Man," I said, "Thank you, Glenn." You know, nothing ever happened with it, but what an honor it was to work with your dad. Thank you. But just, just a wonderful person. One. Just one phenomenal musician. Forget yeah. the singing. I mean, just musicianship-wise. There's one thing, Debbie, that I adore that your dad did. And I don't know if it was in London. It was with full orchestra. I'm talking oboes, bassoons, violins, uh, you name it. Like 100, 110 pieces. Right. And he, and he did soliloquy. From Carousel. Oh uh, yes, yes. You know, that, I, and you know I, what he used. To, he, I wonder what he'll think of me. Yes. I guess he'll call me the old man. Right. And uh, and I saw it was I saw it on TV whenever that was, and I just I, he blew me away. I just went, wow. Yeah. And I think he ended the show with that. Wow. He used I to do Bill, too. What is that? Well, that's what yeah, my boy, Bill. Right. He'll be tall yeah, and yeah, as yeah, tough yeah. as a tree. Yeah, he would do Will that in Bill. Vegas. Oh, yeah. And that's that's from Carousel, the Broadway okay, show yeah. Carousel. I mean, there have been many recordings on it. You know, Sinatra does a phenomenal version of Soliloquy. But right. it's the first time I ever saw Glenn live. You know, wow. when I say live, watching him on TV at home doing Soliloquy. And... He sang that hell out of it. I always said Dad could sing the telephone book. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he just sang, you know, because it's not an easy tune to do. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an easy song at all. Right. You know, and uh, he, he was just tremendous. Absolutely. You, you do a lot of shit. When I said Frank Sinatra, I meant when you said um, studio musician, It I you said reprise. Or reprise. Yeah, but I automatically <laughs> thought Frank Sinatra, "Strangers in the Night," because Dad played on that. Oh, that's why I said oh that, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, my favorite song that Dad used to do in Vegas was "Stars." Stars, they come and go. They go fast. They go slow. And then he oh, and yeah, you'd see yeah, him on yeah. the screen. He'd have him yeah. on the screen, and then he'd bust through the screen when oh, you, they I come up it. singing. It was so. Incredible. Oh wow! I used wow. to it love was, it. What yeah. they call like a living screen? Yes, yeah, it was the screen. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I used that years and years and years ago in a club in New York called the Latin Quarter, where I came through a living screen. That was right. Like, oh, God, that was I don't know, nineteen sixty-two, three or yeah, the yeah. Oh, what? A, yeah. Oh. Wow. It was so awesome. Now, what, oh. you do a lot of headlining in Atlantic City, don't you, and, and Vegas? Do you still come to Vegas quite a bit? I was supposed to be uh, at the uh, South Point. Uh, okay. Yeah, and March 1, 2. Don't tell me. What's no, his no. name? Uh, um, is it Binion? No. What, what's the guy's name? Oh, uh, Michael, yeah, yeah. Michael Gone. My, is it gone? Michael Gone. Yeah, right, wonderful, right. What, nice man. Yeah. Wonderful man. And I work there, uh, Avalon works there, Dupree's work there, Tony Orlando works yeah. there. And I was supposed to be there May 1, 2, and 3, but you know. That's a little off the strip. South Point's really kind of out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. nice. That's oh, yeah. A great room, a great room yeah. to work. It's very, very intimate. You know, holds maybe about, I don't know, 500 people. Maybe even less. You know. How many Golden Boy shows do you still do? Oh my God! You know? I would love to come to one of those. I oh, think that'd be a blast. Must. You must. That'd be a blast. We started the show back in 1985. Mm -hmm. uh, a guy by the name of Dick Fox had an idea to put three Italian teenage idols together. 
<laughs> so we, because we all knew one another, we grew right. up in South Philadelphia, blocks away from one right. another. Taught Frankie talked to me, Fabian talked to Frank, Fabian called me with the friend. We said, gee, you know, it looks like, it sounds fun. So we started the tour in 1985 and it was tremendous success. And I turned to Frankie, who I call Cheech. I, I've known Frank since I was 10 years old. And Frankie was 12, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, yo, Cheech, I said, this is wonderful. But how long is this going to last? A year, two years tops, and it's over. It's 2020. We're still doing the show. That's awesome. People and love it. Oh, my God. The, absolutely. Yeah. And the show's better now than it was when we started it back in 85. I bet. And it's going to yeah. be even better because you've had so much time off that you just can't wait to get out there. That's true. That's true. Yeah, right, right. It's a fun show. It's it's really fantastic. You know, we all do our separate thing. Mm -hmm. And then we come out. Then we come out, the three of us. We open up with the three of us. We open up bandstand. We go and hop in. Bop, right. Go and hop in. The right, so, bop, 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 bop. Then I do my thing. Crazy, Frankie. Then Frankie calls uh, Fabian. And, my, I, and we do a thing called the Tribute. And Frankie does Ricky Nelson. Oh. Fabian does Presley. I do Bobby Darren. And then... We all together do Bill Haley, Rock Around the Clock. How yeah. fun. Yeah. I bet that's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a great show. Yeah. It's really a wonderful show. Wow. Well, I am so impressed by everything I've read, and I just now I want to come see a show. I know oh, I must. love Big Band. Yeah, definitely. You I must. thank you so much for in, uh, agreeing to meet with me and do an episode, and um, I hope that this COVID gets out of the way and you go on to oh, yeah, yeah. back on the road. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, right now, as of, let's see, uh, this coming Friday, uh, we're in Pennsylvania and we're going into the green stage, which means okay. you could go out, see right. restaurants, so on and so forth, which would it, it, be very nice. I haven't been to a restaurant since March. I know. And you're, you know, you need to stay in because you're, you know, compromised. And, well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. But, so does your wife go to the store and all, she does all the shopping and oh, all I'll, that? I'll go, I'll go, I'll wear yeah. a mask, you right. know, I'll go to, uh, you know, like a Wawa or something, get a hoagie, you know, whatever, right. you know, yeah. something. Is it a Philadelphia Eagles mask? It is. <laughs> My daughter was over yesterday for Father's Day, right? And they gave me like a coffee cup, you know, world's greatest dad. Right. And and it was an eagle's mask. Oh, how funny. I said, thank you for doing that, honey. I said, I was just going to buy one. I was going to go on the, on the web and, you know, order one. Right. She, yeah. So it's an, oh, eagle, it's an eagle's mask. That's funny. <laughs> Gosh. Well, I can't wait for everything to get opened up so everybody can get back out touring. Although I probably won't have any more interviews to do once everybody gets busy. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, you know. I this, love it. This, this I, Zoom thing is absolutely wonderful. I know it. You know, you I know. sat at home here. I haven't flown since. You know, I'm a flight attendant. Oh no, I, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, oh. I sang on the road with Dad for 25 years. I, well, that I know. Yeah, that but I know, this is but... my 34th year. Oh my God! I didn't know I, you were a flight attendant. Yeah, and so I have. I've been off since April because they haven't wow. had enough flying. Well, so, my God, I hope I fly. Well, I don't know what airline you fly on, but I'm American. I come to Philly all the time. Well, that's it. That's all I, I fly. That's all I fly is American. Yay. And that, really, that's all I fly is American. You know, that's we got, awesome. a big, got a big hub in Philadelphia. I know. And I was, I, I, and I'm based in LA right now, even though I live in Phoenix. In Phoenix, but right. I, I wanted to go to Philly in the summer because they do all Europe and I love Europe. I mean, I yeah. love Europe. Yeah. And uh but now there's no flying to Europe right now out of Philly. So I stay no, in LA. Yeah. Right, right. As a matter of fact, as you know, what is it, one world? Yes. They're associated with one world, right? Yes. Remember? I hope and I I hope that's that I can remember that that's right I, or we're gonna have to cut this out. I I, I I think it's one world. Anyway, I remember going to Australia. I I got up because they're partners with Qantas. Right. American yeah. is so I got a lot of miles. Yeah. You got know. in that first class seat up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the last time we were there, we threw, we flew. Wait a minute. It was on American. It wasn't Qantas. Okay. I think it was, uh, we threw, uh, we, we, we flew. 
we flew in a, a 380. Okay. The Airbus 380. Right, right, which, right. Which is a. I haven't been on that. Well, I'm not. Uh, we don't. I haven't worked on that yet. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if it, they're they're keeping it in service or not. But yeah. What, what a wonderful aircraft. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. I have to go back to work next month, and I do have a couple of Japan, uh, Tokyo. Oh well, yeah. you may be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't oh, know. I think it's. I think we're on the 787 Boeing. That that's not too shabby. It's, no, it's a beautiful plane. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, not yeah. too shabby. I like the triple seven better because the bunks are better for the crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on a tour bus when I'm on yeah. a tour, laid yeah. out the same way as the tour oh, bus. Oh, I, I remember you know my first tour with the Dick Clark Caravan of Stars back in 1960. You know, and I only had one two records at the time, and I was so skinny back then. I used to see, I used to sleep in the luggage rack on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about the kind of buses that are traveling around the country today. Right, you know? exactly. I'm talking like it looked like an old school bus. Like the old Partridge family tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, That's geez. funny. Oh, my gosh. Well, Bobby, I've enjoyed this so much, and I'll look forward to meeting you um, in the near, very near future, I hope. It, well, it's either going to be at a cabaret or a concert or something. It. Or hopefully I'll be on one of your flights. Absolutely. Yay. I will enjoy that. <laughs> well, you have a wonderful day. And tell your wife, thank you so much for getting you all set up. And uh, mwah. can't thank you enough. Mwah. Thank you ever so much, Debbie. What a pleasure. Thank no, you, Greg. It's a pleasure for me. All right, honey. You have a great day. Same here. Stay right. safe. Stay safe. You too. Oh, Wear okay. your mask. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Gosh, I really enjoyed that interview. How fun. Can't wait to meet him someday down the road. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. Stay tuned next week for another great episode of the Debbie Campbell Good Time Show. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. And wear your mask.